Hello and welcome to discussions of some abstracts on oncogene-driven non-small cell lung cancer from the World Lung Cancer Congress in 2025. I'm Devika Das and I'm a clinical thoracic medical oncologist. Let's start with ROS1. Dr. Liu and team presented some updated efficacy and safety of daltrekinib in patients with ROS1-driven non-small cell lung cancer from the Global Trust 2 study. As we know, daltrekinib is one of the next-generation ROS1 inhibitors, and as of now, it has an FDA approval in the U.S. in June 2025. The Global Trust study, the data that was reported out, demonstrated continuing high overall and intracranial response rates in both the TKI-naive and TKI pretreated patients with non-small cell lung cancer with this oncogene. With five months of additional follow-up, we saw that the responses, one response remained durable and there was good PFS data. Teltrecnib has a favorable safety profile compared to a lot of other medications in this space. And as there is a lot of um, sparing of the off-target effects, it spares the track B. Uh, and as of now, this is one of the medications that I offer my patients in clinic with Rossman mutation with very close follow-up for GI toxicities, especially liver enzymes that need a close uh, check as you start the patients. In close heels with KRAS G12C mutation, we saw the presentation of data from the primary endpoint results of Sherlock, which is a phase two trial of sotiracib, bevacizumab, and chemotherapy in the frontline setting in advanced KRAS G12C mutation. While we saw high overall response rates across all PDL1 expression levels and molecular subgroups, the, there was significant toxicity from the addition of multiple drugs, including grade 5 toxicities, and there were deaths. The interesting part in this study was when they broke it down by the subgroups of TB53, KEEP1, and uh, STIC11 mutations, which we see very commonly with KRAS G12C, there did not appear to be an impact on clinical outcomes which is something that probably needs to be explored further. As of now, this is not something that I would offer to my patients mainstream, but, but more to come on that data. Dr. Petroska and team presented data in the EGFR Exxon 20 insertion space, specifically with zipalertinib in patients who had received prior amivantamab. We know that this is a very important clinical unmet need. As of now, we don't have approved therapies in this space they demonstrated that there was promising efficacy in this space for patients who had progressed on or after prior chemotherapy and amivantamab without other EGFR exon 20 insertion therapies. The overall response rates were in the range of 31.5% with a duration of response of about 9.5 months. The safety profile was not unexpected, but it's something that we have to pay attention to in clinic. A lot of the patients do have hematologic toxicities with anemia and the skin toxicities, including paronychia and rash. I'm looking forward to looking at the data in the phase three trials that are ongoing because this clearly is a drug that has promising effects. Moving on to the HER2 mutation-driven space, we had two different posters that were presented at this Congress. The first one was with Seva Bertinib, where Dr. Lee and group presented data from their exploratory analysis of the factors associated with clinical outcomes in these patients from the study. What they reported was treatments with less than two previous lines of therapy showed better treatment efficacy compared to those patients that were heavily pre-treated, and that's not surprising. What was interesting, though, in this study is the presence of the YVMA variant. Those patients had enhanced treatment efficacy while patients that had a coexisting TP53 co-mutation, there was a decreased treatment efficacy. A multivariate analysis indicated that both of these provided independent prognostic information when adjusted for clinical factors. Now, this is important because we have several drugs that are being studied in this space. We have one drug that has a clinical approval in this space. So as we pick and choose the best medicine for our patients, it is not only important to look at the toxicity profile, and the clinical efficacy, but also to specifically look at the co-mutational status and the specific HER2 variant that our patient's tumor expresses. On similar lines, and talking about the drug that has an FDA approval in the HER2 mutant lung cancer space is Zongartnib, and the poster presented in this Congress was from Bimayon Lung 1, 
And what it showed was basically what we already knew and expected was uh, improved systemic and intracranial activity, which was durable in patients with HER2 mutation-driven non-small cell lung cancer in the cohorts one and four, where patients had brain metastases at baseline with overall response rates in the range of 41 to 44% which is impressive and um, something that we're all looking forward to. Overall, a great Congress for patients with oncogene-driven cancers. A lot of drugs in the same space, which gives us a lot of choices, uh, but more to come and um, more data will be reported out soon. Thank you.